muchísimas gracias, uh, Enrique. Mi esposa es española, por eso hablo un poco de español. My spouse is Spanish, so I speak a little bit of Spanish. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a pleasure to welcome you here in uh, our auditorium. Uh, pleasure and an honor. Uh, this is usually the, the speech where people come to the meeting full of energy and they fall asleep. Because uh, mostly it's being written by someone who doesn't know the topic and who is supposed to read about something he knows uh, little of. Uh, so I'll try to keep it short. Um, we have, as you know, at the National Bank of Belgium, a credit register, uh, which is actually regulated uh, by a specific legislation in Belgium. So we are a little bit specific, uh, maybe different from uh, many of you uh, in terms of the activities we do. And it also means that the way we deal with this credit register is a bit more focused on some uh, social issues, on uh, basically over indebtedness and uh, prudential supervision, because we also deal with prudential supervision here uh, at the bank. So uh, when we have to allocate costs uh, of uh, the activities in the credit register, uh, then everybody claims that they don't use the data, um, because uh, then it's about cost allocation. But afterwards, they find so many reasons for why it's, a, it's such a good idea to, 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 uh, to have these data available. Um, I was told I only uh, had 10 minutes, uh, which uh, the person who wrote the speech regretted because they wanted me to speak for an hour. Uh, I agree that it's only 10 minutes, and you will find it great that it's only 10 minutes. Um, so let me uh, tell you a little bit about the, 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 um, uh, the market in Belgium. We, we, we did a study recently, and, and, and some of the features of the market. Um, so uh, it's a market with about 5 million loans uh, for a total of 21 billion. So that's also what we have in our register. Uh, and, and basically, it's, it's well, probably no surprise for you, but it's a relatively mature uh, and diversified uh, market. So in terms of market organization, in terms of access to credit, in terms of uh, you know, the quality of uh, uh, um, the processes uh, of banks and other institutions providing credit, it's not like we have uh, a lot of concerns. Uh, there, are well two, uh, there are two market segments uh, which do require some specific attention. On the supply side, it concerned credit lines and installment loans granted for an unspecified purpose. So basically loans you know, that, that are not um, related to buying something to a mortgage or something like that. And uh, on the demand side, what we see, and that is probably also no surprise, is that it's essentially it's, it's, it's relatively vulnerable people that take up those loans. Um, and also that the more vulnerable they are, the higher the interest rates. And actually, what, what we see is mostly those loans are contracted to pay back other credits. So, you know, some people would talk ab about sharks. Uh, they do fulfill the role in the market, but it's certainly a specific market where you don't have many players and where there is a real risk that people that are vulnerable, that are confronted with payment they cannot do, would enter into more credit at higher interest rates to the point that, uh, you know, at some point they, they just can't do it anymore. Uh, and that's you know, typically the kind of people that uh, um, you know, social services afterwards will have to deal with and maybe uh, uh, then part of the credit will be uh, uh, taken over by, by whatever. So this is, this is probably, if we have any concern about the way the credit market works in, in Belgium, it's this very specific segment. The, the, the advertisements that those kinds of people do, uh, they, they, they go directly in the street, it's not very sophisticated, and great pictures about, uh, you know, vacation somewhere, uh, a new computer, and so on. Uh, easy credit, uh, they don't control so much, and then you are stuck with probably something you cannot repay, or in, in some cases, uh, because if it would be only uh, that you cannot repay, of course, they would go bankrupt, but uh, you, you know the one. Um, Maybe on regulation, because of course, being a central bank, we care about also about regulation. And, and you know better than I do that there is a consumer credit directive, which uh, regulates access to, to consumer credit. Now, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a liberal, so in general, I'm not so much for uh, too much regulation. And you know, I believe that at least uh, to some extent, the market can, can take care of a uh, uh, proper uh, credit uh, market. But, but there are some issues. Uh, 
One issue is that we tend to want to regulate the maximum interest rate. And then again, we are faced with this obvious self of you know, letting the market work and making sure that you don't overburden people that at some point uh, do not have the means to, to pay back. And of course, if there, if there would be perfect information on, on, on the consumer side, there would be no problem, but we know that there is no perfect information. And actually, uh, there are some studies showing that the, the, the least uh, educated people tend to be confronted with the least interesting offers uh, from uh, you know, credit providers. So you have indeed uh, uh, some people in the market that realize that they're confronted with people with very low level of uh, financial literacy and that propose then products that are uh, not uh, probably adequate for, for these kinds of, uh, of customers. I know that by focusing on those issues, you, you, you will have the impression that I, uh, I have the impression that the people in this market are, are not behaving uh, properly. That is not the case. I think the story is really that 95% of the market is, 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 is okay. But we do have as a public institution to care about the, you know, one, two, three, four, five percent, where there might be issues. Now, the role in terms of consumer uh, protection uh, or information is not with us, not the national bank. It's the FSMA, uh, but indeed, it's important uh, to try to educate people. And and you know, I have meetings at uh, governing council, and we talk about interest rates. We talk a lot about you know tiering. We talk about LTRO, and uh, then we try to communicate that. And what we don't realize or should realize is that actually. For most people, the concept of an interest rate is already something very difficult to grasp, uh, let alone DLTRO, tiering, QE, uh, you know, you name it. Um, the world is changing. And of course, uh, regulation, but only regulation, uh, the market's operator, will have to get used to the fact that uh, you know, it's, it's credit is, is, is not only about Getting to a bank, going to a bank or an office somewhere, having a discussion, filling it templates, and then ultimately after a discussion, getting a credit. Maybe you have to go twice. Now you have a lot of players that want to have access to credit, like this on a mobile phone. Uh, you know, these uh, mortgages, mortgages that you can contract uh, just uh, you know after five minutes uh, on the internet. Uh, this is of course an opportunity because it allows people to have access to more. No, it used to be the case that you had to take an appointment with man one bank and then with another one, and then you would have to wait, and they would make, would make an offer, and then another one, and one month would have passed. Uh, now you can very quickly get access to offers from different banks, which is good. But there is a risk associated to that, um, that it can lead people to, uh, to get credit uh, without proper uh, uh, control on their capacity to pay back. So the worst example, so I mean, the, the highest risk would be with, you know, this payday loans, flash credit, uh, which uh, uh, sometimes also come from peer-to-peer, from -peer, uh, which are not regulated, which falls you know, uh, somewhere in a gray zone and are not regulated. So those are issues, of course, you, you, you probably want to deal with, but, but also regulators we have uh, to deal with. Um, and again, there, there are some, uh, some uh, studies in, in um, I guess, in Germany, in, in Netherlands, showing that uh, the least educated people are the most likely to fall into uh, some, of, uh, some of those traps. Um, what else did I want to tell you? Mortgage loans. Uh, one thing that we have, I think, in common in many countries in, in, uh, in Europe is that house prices have gone up quite a lot. And we are responsible for, for to some extent because of the real, very low interest rate policies that we conducted. Now you've seen it's moving in the other direction, which is probably another issue for credit, but anyway. And uh, with house prices going up, we've seen that uh, indebtedness has gone up. And then you, we, you have long discussions because, of, of course, this indebtedness is not a, a, you know, a net indebtedness. You know, you, you, there is an asset that people have bought, a house. Is it a problem or is it not a problem that people, and basically well, if, we, if we look at the level of indebtedness of consumers in Belgium, we, we used to be very much below the European average and now we are, we are you know, up, not substantially above, but we are above. But, but, but the trend was clear uh, with, with uh, a very strong credit dynamics uh, above GDP levels and an increase in indebtedness. So if you only look at the gross number of uh, credit to GDP, it looks worrisome. 
At the same time, if we look at the net assets of our population, which have been decreasing by a rate of 3% per day in the last few weeks, with equity markets crashing, but anyway, if we look at net assets, they've been go going up. So which conclusion should we draw from uh, these observations? More debt, more assets, problem, no problem. So at the end of the day, the debt of someone is the asset of someone else. So only saying, you know, on a net basis, it's, it shouldn't be an issue, of course, it's wrong. Because at some point, you have people that have exposures and people that have um, uh, net assets. Uh, so what we, we, we have to do is basically look more into the details. The averages don't tell us much. And look at vulnerabilities within the markets, people that indeed are over indebted or risk being over indebted if some shocks uh, take place in the markets, and you can have different ones, shocks that would affect the values of their assets. So they've bought a house. You know, uh, the, um, the typical example was in the US uh, with the subprimes. They buy a house, but they don't have a lot of money, and then house prices go down. Uh, they're uh, below the line, and OK. Uh, and it's different because in the US, you would just you know, run away on your credit here. Uh, you're stuck with it. And the other issue is that they could uh, be faced with, um, you know, if there is a recession, losing their job. And then, you know, even though the house was affordable on the basis of their income before they lost their job, uh, of course, uh, they are faced with that shock. And so this is, this is uh, uh, issues that we look at um, in detail to, 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 us, to, to uh, identify pockets of vulnerabilities. And then we have intervened. So we have asked banks basically to limit uh, the number of mortgages with, uh, um, you know, um, I'm not sure what, what's the name in English again, but basically not providing more than 90% of the value of the house in credit. Um, but even there, it's difficult because sometimes you know that people have other assets. So they could go for 120% because basically they're going to renovate the house and they have other sources income of other assets. So what we've tried to do is, is, is basically find a good uh, uh, middle ground uh, between doing nothing and over-regulating by just coming with rules that are way too strict. So it's on the basis of a complier explain. So we've set a number of targets depending on the kind of credit uh, uh, provision and customers. And we've told the bank, on the aggregate, we expect you to be uh, below that number. If you're above, explain. And then the explanation could be, yes, um, we know that the parents have money. OK, socially, maybe it's you know, uh, giving them an advantage. But anyway, if the parents have money and the bank feels comfortable that the kids can buy a house and renovate the house, OK, if they can show that indeed uh, the parents have account with the banks and they have assets and, and, and they can prove that their processes are, are OK, uh, then uh, we will accept that. So this is, this is um, of course, uh, an activity uh, that for us is very important in terms of uh, bank supervision. And again, we try to find uh, a way to, to um, limit the exposure over indebtedness while uh, not being too strict and uh, having some understanding of the, uh, the market functioning and the, the reality of credit provision at the end of the day. Voila. Um, maybe that's already 10 minutes. Or even more. Uh, so I should stop here again. Have a great day. Welcome here. Uh, enjoy. Uh, and I hope uh, you, you will have also a, a very nice uh, evening with my previous boss. I will be in Liege, so I'm, I will not be able to attend. Otherwise, it would have been a pleasure to be here with Didier Henderson with you. Thank you so much. Thank you.